In a previous video, we saw that solutes lower the vapor pressure of a solution. We can see this on a phase diagram that this takes place at all temperatures. In this phase diagram, the blue line represents the solid to liquid or liquid to gas or even solid to gas phase transitions at a given temperature for the pure solvent, whereas the red line indicates the same transitions for a solution. When we look at the liquid gas transition at any given temperature, we see that the blue solvent line is at a higher pressure than is the red solution line. This shows that the solution vapor pressure is at a lower pressure than the solvent vapor pressure for any given temperature. If we look at this phase diagram in a little more detail, we can also compare the boiling points and the melting or freezing points of the solution and the solvent. We see that at a given pressure, the boiling point of the solvent, represented by the blue line, falls at a lower temperature than the boiling point of the solution. However, at the freezing or melting point, we see that the solution has a lower temperature for its freezing point than does the pure solvent. This boiling point elevation that we see for the solution, as well as the freezing point lowering or freezing point depression that we see for a solution, are two additional colligative properties. It is possible to calculate how much the boiling point will change in a solution compared to the pure solvent. This is given by the equation delta T equals K subscript B times molality. The delta T is the change in the boiling point. The K sub B is the boiling point elevation constant and the script M is the molality of the solute in a solution. The boiling point elevation constant will be a specific constant for any given solvent. At the same time, the change in the freezing point can also be determined by a similar equation. In this case, the only difference is that we use subscripts for F for the freezing point instead of B for the boiling point. So we end up with equ equation delta T subscript F, or the change in the freezing point, is equal to K sub F, which is the freezing point depression constant, times the molality of the solute concentration. It's important to note that K sub B and K sub F will have different values, even for the same solvent. Another thing to note is that these equations just give us the change in the boiling point or the change in the freezing point. In order to find the new boiling point for the solution, we would have to take the boiling point for the pure solvent and add the change in the boiling point. In order to find the freezing point, of the solution, we would need to take the freezing point of the pure solvent and subtract the change in the freezing point. In this problem, we're asked to calculate the freezing point of a 2.6 molal aqueous sucrose solution. Since we know this is an aqueous solution, that means water is the solvent. We can look up in the table of freezing point depression constants and find that K sub F for water is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. At the same time, since we know water is a solvent, you should recall from past experience that the freezing point of pure water is 0.0, .0 degrees Celsius. Since we're looking for the change in the freezing point, first of all, we would use the equation delta Tf equals K sub F times M. We're given the K sub F value of 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal, and we're given the molality is 2.6 molal, so give, this gives us a change in the freezing point of 4.84 degrees Celsius. In order to find the new freezing point of the solution, we would take the freezing point of the pure solvent, which is 0.0, .0 degrees Celsius, and subtract from that the change in the freezing point which is 4.84 degrees Celsius, and we would get the freezing point for the sucrose solution 
of negative 4.84 degrees Celsius. By now, you should be able to predict the effect a solute would have on the boiling point of a solution. You should also be able to predict the effect a solute would have on the freezing point of a solution. You should be able to calculate the change in the freezing point or the change in the boiling point for a solution, and you should understand the difference between the case of B and case of F values. Finally, you should be able to determine the new freezing point of a solution or the new boiling point for a solution.